<laughs> happy Monday. <laughs> and it is, it is a really happy Monday. Today is a great day, but it's, great day. today we have some really something fun and interesting to share with you. So you're probably wondering why we're standing in all of this mess. And if you saw when we opened, Dan had on a hard hat <laughs> because we are under construction again. I think it's something, you know what, there is a joke about us being always in some kind of, we're either doing somebody's house or I'm doing decor for somebody or we're building yeah, We're not doing it something. here at the office. We're doing it on our own house or it's somebody. It's what watched. we do. We're out of town this weekend helping somebody with their house. But anyway, it's, we're it's always kind of doing a, that. kind of a side project that we do. You know, I have my real estate license, so we're always helping <laughs> clients, you know, fix their houses up right. to sell and, and anyway, decorating those. So what did we decide to do? We decided to redo the entire studio yep. here. As you saw in that opening shot, quite a bit different. But um, before we go into more detail, watch this video. We've been filming kind of a behind the scenes, our own little house remodeling TV show. Here you go, watch this. This is the before look. This is an old set. We're getting ready to redo all of this for Christian Fitness. So we wanted you to see what it looked like beforehand before we started demo and started reconstructing brand new Christian Fitness Studio that's going to include our kitchen, our living room, interview area, and then a workout area. So this is going to be revamped, reconstructed very soon. Very soon. We are redoing this set tied in to Christian Fitness. It will all become a new Christian Fitness set. Day two, you saw part of day one when we started to take all this down. Now we're on day two. We just finished a show today on Love Living Life a little while ago. So now we're kind of trying to get regrouped and what is day three going to be like? So day two is do a show on Love Living Life set and then start finishing tearing all this down. Actually, crew's coming in and taking the floor down. And then we'll empty out the whole set on the Love Living Live Christian Fitness set. We'll take all that down, box everything up, and then we're going to take this set apart, and it is being moved. So, hey guys, we're moving. We're actually moving. We're just moving this to there, and there to that. So, I know it doesn't make sense right now, but it will. It'll make a lot of sense. So it's gonna be a lot of work, but we're super excited because we're gonna do so many amazing things and we're gonna bring in a lot of guests coming in. So this is gonna be really, really good. Right, day three, we're disassembling the old set. So you know how beautiful it looks on the front? We're taking you behind the scenes. This is what it looks like behind <laughs> the sets. They're just wing flats. Since it's not a house, you know, you only have one side. So we're going to have to have thing on the back. And we were taking all the electrical down. So we have to disassemble all the electrical so we can remove these into different panels. So we're going to unscrew all these panels and take them apart separately. So I've got to take all the electrical down. That's what we're in the process of doing. It's disassembling all the electrical. And then we're going to rerun all this once we get everything moved. So today is electrical and deconstruction day. These flats are in pieces, anywhere from four to eight feet wide. So we cover the seams with pillars and different things. So we've got to disconnect all the seams. We're going to take the pillar off to get to the seams where we can move the flats. Simple project, right? Yeah, not so much.
So there you go. Well, now, I guess that was three days. Now we're on day four. You can see we got a little bit more of the background done. But anyway, so that's what we're doing. That's why the set is all torn apart. From uh, the video <laughs> this to this now. Actually, it was so funny earlier, Rob said, oh, do we have any water? So I walked over to where our kitchen was on the Love Living Life set to get water out of the refrigerator and realized I'd already disconnected the refrigerator, removed it, pushed it aside, <laughs> emptied it. There's no water in it. So it was just funny because it's been there for what, six years like yeah. that. So, but from what that was to now what this looks like, which we know it looks like a mess, but it's going to be awesome. A lot of work. Lots yeah. So we basically we flipped the, the Christian fitness, you know, the Love Living Life kitchen and everything is going to be over here. So we're going to get a lot better camera angles of what we're doing on the countertop and when we're cooking and goofing off and doing things in the kitchen, we'll get better shots of that. And then we're going to have a whole interview area. If you've tuned in recently, you know we had the Fellowship of Christian Athletes on. It was kind of tough to cram everybody into a little area. So we're going to have a nice little interview area. And then we're, we're going to have a whole exercise. Yeah, Harvest International. Yeah. We're going to have a whole exercise area down there at the end. And coming up soon in the next couple months, don't, know, don't have a launch date yet, but we're going to be doing Christian Fitness Live. So we're actually gonna start exercising. You can exercise with us at home live and we're gonna be doing that over on that other area. So we're gonna have this whole side of the studio that will be all Christian fitness and love living life. So anyway, that's the project. I don't know how long it's gonna take, but <laughs> so for the next few weeks, as you join us here on Love Living Life, you'll see this start to be, start to transform itself again. We and, always um, have something to do. Yeah. No, we never get bored and we never stop moving. So even if we're not doing a Christian fitness, <laughs> This is exercise. Those panels are <laughs> over 10 feet high and they're heavy. So it's kind of um, And what, what's neat is we're repurposing. Yeah. I mean, all this stuff's been used for, you know, 20, 30, 40 years here at CTN. I mean, Leo, mm -hmm. who's behind the scenes, he and his father built, built a lot of these sets, and a the lot of this that were too. moving. Yeah. Um, so we're repurposing it and giving it new life. Just, just really neat, neat stuff. Um, instead of building everything from scratch, why not use what we already had? We'll move it, tweak it, maybe repaint some things and uh, reuse that. So anyway, that give you an update on what's going on. We'll give you an update now each you know week. I know why we're standing in all this. You'll be able to watch the updates <laughs> live each week on what we're doing so definitely under construction with that we wanted to have our fun church sign for today so appropriate with our theme i found this one need home improvement bring your family to church now you got to really think about that if you need a home improvement it means that in your home inside the home not your house but you so if somebody needs a home take them to church Get the inside of their, get your family improved on by the word of God. I thought that was pretty so, clever. That so was Trinity cool. Baptist Church, yeah, had that. I, I thought that it. was pretty clever. Bring your family to church. I think that's awesome. Yeah, people, a lot of people have issues and things at home. Get the family into church. Get under the word of God. Let that be your manual. Yeah, I love that. I think that's a great sign. We love when you guys give us your feedback. And if you're watching us live today, you know, go ahead and put some things in the comments. We'll get to it later. We don't have time right now, but we we'll definitely will always return those comments that you send to us. We heard from a precious, precious viewer recently. And what I love about this, Lori, actually, we have the, um, yeah, we've it got really the envelope did come and the letter. To us. Yeah, this is beautiful. It's from Marlene. And I love when people send us notes and emails and messages and just, I love that because it becomes very encouraging to us. You know, we, we know that television tells God's vision and we know that, but when we actually get to connect to somebody, like people that come to our website and fill out forms and let us know they're watching or they're on Facebook and we have this whole Facebook family thing going on, that's a, be that's a beautiful thing. But when you get somebody that's handwritten something, that's really beautiful. Well, not just that. Look at the so, cover of the of the I note know. card. It is. It's so cute. <laughs> it's so mouse cute. So I just, it gave me Love a big it. smile. <laughs> but Marlene said, Rob and Lori, thank you both for your service to our Lord Jesus Christ. I've been consistent working out with you um, since February of this year. So far, this is the longest I've stuck. I've stuck to it. Thanks for wave your fat goodbye. The Wave Your Fat Goodbye series, I'm seeing results. I also do some of your other ones when I need a change for whatever reason. So keep it up and know I'm praying and giving thanks for you both. So that just, Gosh. that's beautiful. Thank that you, is, Marlene. We thank appreciate you so that. Much. that. That's really special. And know this too, when somebody contacts us, we pray for them too. So we, we covet someone praying for us. We think that's just such a beautiful thing because that's something God does. But then we pray for you guys too. So that's that's important. Well, I so, love the card that she took the time so, to actually mail that yeah, in and write to us. She um, did. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm lucky if I get an email off that's more than one sentence long, so <laughs> that is pretty special. Thank you so much for that, Marlene. All right, our week coming up. Man, we've got a busy schedule coming up this week. We do have a busy schedule. What do we have first? <laughs> Tuesday. <laughs> okay. Coming up this Tuesday, September 20th, National Voter Registration Day. I want to preface this for just a second because, Rob, um, because we've done We the People for many, many, many years, and we've got a lot, a lot of those segments for CTN. I think that was something that Bob requested from you, and he just loved all those We the People. But Rob will go on a rant every once in a while with stuff, so we had to go through a lot of the episodes and make sure it wasn't a rant. So watch this it's i think this is a really great piece of information as part of our we the people here you go today on we the people we're going to talk about voting as a christian you should be involved and vote that's not just my opinion that's according to the bible Look up Deuteronomy 1.13, Deuteronomy 16.18, and Exodus 18.21 for proof. Proverbs 29.2 states, When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. The Bible encourages us to elect our leaders, but who should you choose? Between all the radio and television talk shows, internet blogs, and opinions by every relative or friend, who do you listen to? There's so much misinformation and manipulation of facts out there that it's tough to wade through it all. Many of these same people will tell you not to let your religious beliefs enter into your political opinion. That is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Political views are nothing more than a combination of moral, economic, and social values. If you don't get your moral and social compass from your religious views, then where does it come from? Does your morality come from a lobbyist, a special interest group, or a union that donates to your campaign? The Bible should be your political, social, moral, and economic guide. Our Declaration of Independence and Constitution were founded on the Bible and teachings of Jesus, so how can you separate those from current political issues? They were the guiding force behind our founders and their character and morality, and it should be your guiding force in voting. If you are pro-life, then that moral conviction affects every facet of your life, including social and economic issues. A politician that wants to fund abortion clinics is making an economic decision on a social and moral issue that is predicated on sin. So don't let someone tell you that your religious conviction shouldn't enter into your political view or voting decision. Anyone that would say that is just trying to disarm your compass. There is right and wrong, and the Bible does not allow you to continually move that line. So how can the Bible guide your voting decisions? I'd like to share with you a simple formula. Start by making a list of your top political issues in order of importance to you. Then compare them to a list of qualities that we'll get from the Bible. First, this is my list of issues. Who would they nominate as Supreme Court and Cabinet nominees? What kind of family values do they support, meaning same-sex marriage, gays in the military, and gay adoption? Are they pro-life or pro-death for unborn babies? What is their character and morality? Welfare, do they consider it the government's responsibility or your neighbor, meaning the church? What is their stance on foreign affairs and immigration? The military, what is their view on Israel, our role as the world's police, and defense of other nations? Healthcare, Medicare, Medicaid. What are their economic theories and experience? And finally, where do they stand on the environment? Belief on carbon fuel, green energies, clean energies, and the EPA. Now here's a list of qualities that we've gotten from the Bible. A man of spiritual maturity, fears God, someone that will judge for the Lord, not for man. Men of truth, righteous, someone that stands in covenant with God, not an unbeliever, hating covetousness, wise, understanding, and a faithful man that will judge with just cause. These qualities will affect every decision a candidate makes, economically, socially, morally, all of them. Now compare these qualities and the political views and see how each candidate would handle each situation. Make sure that you check their voting record, what they've done in the past, and what is their fruit. Notice I didn't include what they've said because a politician will tell you what you want to hear so that they can get your vote but what is their fruit concerning that issue? My top three political points are non-negotiable. If a candidate doesn't share my belief on those issues, then they get cut from my list right away. I'll then take the remaining candidates and see how they score on the rest of my list. Since abortion and family values are my top three, how has each candidate voted in the past and what laws did they pass or veto concerning those? 
If a candidate approved abortions or endorsed homosexual marriage, according to the qualities I took from the Bible, I can't consider them at all. I'll then look at the remaining folks and rate them on all the other categories, and I'll vote for the one that scores the best. We hope that this has helped you determine your own list and then decide who you think you should vote for. But always let the Bible be your guide. Thanks for joining us on We the People. When you see why you use that video, we, it would take forever to redo that. <laughs> but anyway, the biblical qualities, that's how we should vote. So anyway, Tuesday is get out the vote day. So go register to vote. I've, we've got so many of these We the People episodes. Uh, you can go to ctnonline.com and look at all the past ones. You can see how young I was back then, but uh, that was shot. I think it was before we even had HD. You saw it was that an old SD image. Um, but anyway, all kinds of values on how you can vote, how you should vote. Um, based on the Bible. I really enjoyed that. I think we should start bringing some of those back. I know they're old, but I mean, Rob's a brilliant writer. He does all the research and he writes everything. And and then, you know, we quote the scripture for every so, single one of them. Yeah, so, so that's my favorite part. Those yeah. are, that's very important because that is, that's our heart. That's our values of, of what we feel as a child of God. Yes. And then a little bit of a tidbit on that. When you saw where he, what he was sitting in front of those walls, were one of the sets that were from way previous shows that we had taken apart. And those are some of these walls now that we painted and redid. So it was just kind <laughs> of like, we, yeah, it was really, it was kind of cool. It was like, oh my goodness. All right, and what else do we have coming up this week? There. Coming up this we week, have, additionally, we have yeah. this Thursday is National States and Capitals Day. And I started thinking, you know, I think as a child, I remember going through those and memorizing them all. And I thought, how would I do today? I'm like, whoa, that was a long time ago that I went through those. So we're going to quiz you today. How would you do? We're going to give you a quick little quiz. Here we go. I gave you six states, and we're cheating because we're going to give you the capitals underneath. All you have to do is mix and match. Which ones are which? Alaska, Michigan, Oregon, South Dakota, Kentucky, and Delaware. And then here's your choices. Frankfurt, awesome. Pierre, Juneau, Salem, Lansing, and Dover. I'm going to give you a minute to think about it. Just mentally draw your line on where, let's see, Lansing, I know, there's there, and Dover, and... So you guys at home, think about it. And here you go. Here are the answers. See how you did. That's awesome. Anybody get them all right? You guys probably all know all these, right? Crew, thumbs up, thumbs down. I wasn't sure about <laughs> Frankfurt. I knew all of these, but I wasn't sure about Frankfurt, where that one went. So that meant I would have had another one wrong too. But I love this. This is awesome because I have a brother that is my husband's age. And when he was little, he knew every state, three years old, he could tell me every state and capital, when a state was founded, all of the, I mean, even all the presidents, I mean, my brother's a genius. So anyway, um, that was just one thing he did when he was little. So this was really a fun thing for me because it made me think about David. And then now we've got a new video. Yeah, most people think of just, you know, maybe one of the largest cities in the state, like we're in Florida. So you mm -hmm. might think, you know, what, Tampa, Orlando, Miami, right. Jacksonville, you know, some of the larger cities. No, it's Tallahassee. One right. of the smaller cities in the state is our state capital. Same with yeah. a lot of these. I mean, it's just ama amazing. Lansing, Michigan, you know, not <laughs> and it's not Detroit or any of the large, large cities in those states. So anyway, it's just kind of fun to learn those. And Lori talked about her brother memorizing them when he was young. Well, he was, a, he's a genius. I mean, a real genius, not how some people go, oh, they're genius he's a real genius so for him me coming home from school and I couldn't wait to see my baby brother because he'd tell me what he learned that day and he would just you could ask him anything and he would he was reading so not I mean, to make you feel bad but watch this video this speaking is of awesome. young kids that this can is know awesome. and quote them we found this on YouTube but watch this okay this is Eli how old are you Eli how old are you uh, and for and um, we're gonna say the um, state capitals. Okay, in random order. Minnesota. Minnesota. Saint Paul. Alabama. <coughs> say it louder. Alaska. Juno. Idaho. Boise. Michigan. Lazy. Arkansas. Arkansas. South Carolina. My name is South Carolina and I'm from Columbia. Say it again. Hey, my name is South Carolina and I'm Columbia. Colorado. Denver. Nebraska. Lincoln. 
North Dakota. North Dakota, Bismarck. Massachusetts. Masha. Boston. Connecticut. Hitford. Say it again. Say it again. It's so four and a half years old, it took him a week. Oklahoma. We'll just keep playing this, but he yeah. just keeps going and going and going. And he, you see here, he learned them by himself, so his pronunciation might be a little bit off on some of them. But he's reading. Four and a half years old. Yeah. He's reading. It's four and a half. I don't know. I was playing with a Tonka toy truck probably, and that was about it. But four and a half years old, memorized all the states and the capitals. Just really, really impressive. He studies and, uh, geography apps and globes and atlases, yeah. which is amazing. Indianapolis. So yeah, he's making me feel kind of bad because I don't know. I only brought up six earlier. <laughs> I don't know if I could have gotten those six right, let alone all of them. So anyway, just amazing, amazing young man. Um, I would like to assume this child Rouge. is being a homeschool child, which is just beautiful and brilliant altogether. But oh, this is just. But he knows the whole map. He knows yeah. where all the states are located. Um, but yeah, I encourage you, especially if you're homeschooling, you know, take advantage of that and get, I had one of those maps when I was little with the little states and, you know, you plugged them into the map. And Luke has so one. my geography for the U.S. Yeah. is pretty good. Worldwide, I'm not that good, but at least in the U.S. I know because I had that little map when I was a kid. So that was National States and Capitals Day. We have one more. Oh, we've got a couple good ones. This Thursday, oh, that's National right. Legwear Day. <laughs> now, of course, today's Monday, but I prepared myself for Thursday. You guys know I love crazy socks. I always wear some wild socks, but... <laughs> there you go. That's what I wore today. That's hilarious. In honor of Thursday for National Legwear Day, you, my M and M socks. Your M and M socks. We got I those. I love these. these in New York City when we went to the M and M store. I think Luke picked those out for you. <laughs> Luke, my little buddy, who by the way also knows all the states and capitals, yeah. and he's what five or five five years old now. Uh, but anyway, Thursday National Legwear Day. Have fun with that. Do something fun with your socks. I wanted to wear that, but it's not cold enough for me to wear socks and some kind of outfit. I could more actually like some wear crazy leggings or something, right? Um, no? uh, that would be Christian fitness. So well. that's not crazy. Leggings aren't crazy anymore. They're like everyday wear. It seems like that's anyway. True. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then coming up Friday, we have International Day of Sign Languages. Pastor James was supposed to be here and help us with this, and he is not here today because he had to go on a trip. Somebody asked him to be on the show, so we miss him, but he was going to help us with that. And so we don't really know sign language. We just know thank you. <laughs> we know That's I love it. you. Everybody knows I love you. I mean, yeah. Elvis made that famous. But, but so we don't know it, but, but celebrate that. If you know someone that knows sign language, get them to teach you something because they're, I learned that little children usually will learn some type of sign language before they really start speaking a lot anyway. So that's why they'll say all done when they're eating or no, no, or, or no yeah, yeah no or I'm finished. I mean, they, they learn that. So I think that's cool. Oh, we always eat thumbs up. Okay. I mean, there's all kinds of quick emojis now are almost sign language. So no, that's not a sign language. Well, it's sure it's a sign emojis. on a phone. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And then coming up Sunday is National One Hit Wonder Day. So I started researching, man, there's tons of one hit wonders. You, I'm Are sure you're thinking, yeah. and you're, oh, I you know, remember that song and this song and that song. One of my favorites, 1988, Bobby McFerrin, Don't Worry, Be Happy. Who doesn't love that song? That's true. Now, in forever. his defense, it was Song of the Year in 1988. He actually won I a Grammy for it. I didn't realize it was it. so long ago. Yeah. 1988? It was number one on the yeah. charts in USA, Australia, and Canada. It was number two in the UK. So number one in USA, Australia, Canada, but he won the Grammy for that song. And really, if you think of Bobby McFerrin, that's probably the only song you've ever heard of. So they consider that a one hit wonder. Now in his defense, brilliant musician, yes. unbelievably yes. vocalist. I mean, if you study yes. him, he's won tons of Grammys. This yeah. is the only Grammy he won. He's done so many amazing, amazing things um, with vocally and with his career. But as far as songs go, this was his main, main, main hit. Uh, but anyway, a lot of one-hit wonders it. through the years. That song still is still valuable today. Don't oh, yeah. worry, be happy. Oh, fun, fun yeah, song. It really is. Great message to it. What's next? We have our devotional. Oh, we got to get into the Word of God. So we only have a couple minutes late, left. Pastor James could not join us today. He actually had to fly out today. He's doing a TV show in another state. So um, anyway, we are going to pick up the devotional. If he has his devotional, go ahead and grab that and open to today. Oh, you have to get it there. My glasses out. Here. Handling your blessing. That's what today is all about. So the topic is.
September 19th, Handling Your Blessing. The scripture comes from 1 Corinthians 6, 19. Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? And here's his devotional. What you allow into your eyes, ears, and mind will either grow you or deteriorate you from the inside out. What you thirst for in life directs your course. Things don't make you who you are, character does. So instead of chasing money, create a character like Christ. It's amazing what God can do with someone whose heart is fully surrendered to Him. And the key is not to lose that fire and that passion that God has ignited in your heart because of whatever worldly thing is creeping into your eyes and ears. There are so many dead carcasses of Christians walking around who once burned for God, but they lost their fire and their excitement. Treat your body, including your mind, like a temple for God. Don't let fear or earthly contentment or anger or offense or any other unwanted guest slip in. Stay hungry, humble, and holy. If you can do those things, you will shape this world for God. And then his final engaging heaven church, quote, own things, but don't let things own you. Don't let money move you, it's a tool. It's like water the way it can flow. Don't allow petty things to creep in and contaminate your blessing. Man, that's good. Contaminate your blessing or your heart. I mean, it's all about your heart condition. I like that. Fully surrender to God because when we fully surrender to God, then we have the Holy Spirit living in us that we, our hearts are surrendered to God and He is always dealing with issues of the heart and then helping you renew your mind so that you have the mind of Christ. So I think that's... I love it. It says don't let those things yes. creep in and that's mm -hmm. the eyes and the ears. And that's why it's so important what you listen to, what kind of music you listen to, um, what you read, what you watch on TV, who, who you, you listen to, who with. you talk to. That's right. Um, you know, your eyes and your ear gates are so important to guard and protect the Holy Spirit. I mean, you think of it as a temple, you wouldn't allow, you wouldn't, you know, let a garbage trunk just, just dump sewage into your temple. You want to take care of that. You want to keep it clean and holy. And so I love that. Don't let those things creep in because they do end up growing and manifesting. That's true. I love that. Great study, That's huh? That's a really good study. So I hope today you got a little bit more of an insight of what's coming up because we know that this is a lot of change. And yes, we're moving again, which is awesome. But mm -hmm. Um, hopefully you got a little bit more of what's coming up and we look forward to you being a part of what we're doing here to bring Christ into your home. Yeah, and wear some crazy socks or leggings or something on what is it Thursday for, for that day. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. We always pray for you at the end and that's 3 John 1, 2. Beloved, I pray that in all respects you may prosper and be in good health just as your soul prospers. Tell somebody Jesus loves them this week. <laughs>